This video is brought to you by my friends over at Piano. Check out the link in the description to get a completely free 30 day trial and start your piano journey today. Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, back again talking about one of my favorite jazz guitar players, one of my bigger influences as a young man and still somebody I admire immensely to this day, Mr. Joe Pass. And it's funny that this video is sponsored by Piano because Joe is a guitar player who has avoided playing the piano by making his guitar sound as piano-y as possible. I say that, of course, he has a long history of playing with great pianists like Oscar Peterson. Um, but Joe's playing as a solo guitar player is about being able to accompany himself. And that was something that always grabbed me. And I think it's why now I play so much piano. When I was younger, I was so drawn to Joe because I didn't have a lot of people that I could play music with. So being a self-contained player, somebody who could play on their own, and accompany themselves was just something that really, really appealed to me. So Joe, wonderful player. As I say, stick around to the end. I'm going to play some of Ain't Misbehaving on the piano and show you some ear training tips and things like that, the way I'm using piano to help my ears and learn some of the stuff that Joe's doing, but be able to practice it in a slightly easier way than the, the nature of the guitar. So here we're looking at Joe playing Ain't Misbehaving, um, an absolute classic Fat Swallow tune. What instrument did Fat Swallow play? Of course, he was a pianist. He was a stride pianist. Um, Joe Pass playing this, it's, it's real tricky to, to talk about how great this is. Uh, I had to put a lot of time into synchronizing the transcription because it is free time. So he's pushing and pulling with the time a lot. He plays some outrageous single note lines. He plays a lot of chordal stuff. Um, there's definitely parts where it really locks into the groove. It's some really, really tasty playing. Joe's um, fingerings can sometimes be a little bit unconventional because he comes from a bit more of a caged background in terms of scale fingerings. And some of his uh, melodic lines involve some ridiculous position shifts, but he just effortlessly nails all of them. And then, of course, there's those thumping. They're not quite walking bass lines, but they give the illusion of a walking bass line or the tritone substitutions that he puts in there. Oh, he's such a great player. So I really do hope you enjoy this. Hit that subscribe button, stick around to the end, and I'll play some piano. But in the meantime, we have Joe Pass playing Ain't Misbehaving. Laters. <laughs> Thank you. 
So as mentioned at the start of the video, this video was sponsored by Piano, so I would encourage you to go and help the channel out by clicking the link in the description, getting a completely free 30 day trial. Take your playing to where you've always wanted it to be by learning some piano today. It will make you a better musician. It's changed everything about my musical approach. Um, let's just briefly talk about Ain't Misbehaving, and then we can see why using a little bit of piano is great as an ear training tool, but also to help us expand our knowledge of voicings and chord construction. So I think um, Ain't Misbehaving is often played in the key of E flat, and the first chord, E flat major seven, I think I'll probably play an E flat six. Uh, when I piece that together, we would have. Well, how have I done that? I know the notes of my E flat major triad. I can put a six in the chord. The reason I don't put a seven in there is the melody is, and I don't think with the seven, it's quite as effective as having the six in there. So that's our E flat major seven. Now the next chord would be an E diminished seven. I can piece this together. flat third, flat five, double flat seven, and my melody. And we can quite quickly, I think, start piecing that, that melody together. We can move to the next chord, it's gonna be an F minor seven. We could build that one, flat three, five, flat seven. Go into an F sharp diminished seven, well, and we can really see how these chords, they can fit nice and easily under our hands. We can start to train the sound of that chord progression in. If we put that melody in on that one, we would have... Um... Our next chord is a G minor seven. We could do that. G, B flat, D, F. Then we have a B flat minor seven. Well, we could do that. Now, my tip for this would be to think, where is my root note? Well, B flat is here. When I see that, I can go, ah, here's my root. Here's my flat seven, here's my third, and here's my five. So that's a B flat minor seven. With my hand here, where is my E flat for an E flat seven? Well, E flat is here. So here's the flat seven, here's the fifth, and here's gonna be my third. A flat major seven, same idea. Just leaving my hand where it is and looking for the closest note that I can play you get these just really, really nice sounding um, chords that, yeah, uh, just they, they grab me. Hopefully they grab you um, when I play that D flat seven right there, right? Root, third, seven, and five. So we can do a lot with the piano just from an ear training perspective. And I mentioned Joe Pass. The thing Joe does in this particular recording is he plays a lot of you know tritone substitutions and there's some um, really cool altered chords that he plays and one that I don't really ever play. Now if I'm playing an A7, um, playing an A7, this kind of basic sound, it's like my um, root note with my guide tones, third and seventh, and then adding in notes around that. The common sounds that you're going to hear on things like this would be a seven flat nine. Absolutely, you might hear that. You might hear 13 flat nine. Well, how are they different? And I'm just changing the notes that I'm adding around my guide tones. So we might add the, uh, what have we got here? The five, the flat seven, and the flat nine. Or we might add the natural 13 and the flat nine. The chord that Joe plays in here it comes up a couple of times is he plays a sharp uh, a nine with a sharp five. So how can I piece that together? How can I practice the sound of that on my piano and really ear train this? Well, again, guide tones. Sharp five. Natural nine. Harmony is just being expressed very quickly and easily and in a pure sense. So we can really look at a chord like that and go, okay, that's my um, my A7 with a sharp nine. I'm not actually sure where he goes from there. I imagine it's probably gonna go to like a D major sound, something like this, because that resolves. So yeah, piano, wonderful. And I would encourage you, like I say, check out the link in the description. Go and support my friends over at Piano because of course it supports the channel. Um, I love everything that I've learned from Piano. It's really made me a more well-rounded musician. So thanks again, Piano. Have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.